Welcome data enthusiasts. We are Zuma, the recruitment agency focused 100% on data tech professionals in the Berlin region. And this is our podcast, Data for Good, connecting you with all things data. Today, please say I'm joined by Ivan Tankuyu. And Ivan is co-founder, chief data officer at AI Superior and Flypix AI that you can just see creeping in the background there. Hi, Ivan. How's it going today? Hi, Joseph. Thank you. I'm doing well. Excellent. Excellent. Today's topic is a relatively new area for me. Some of the skills I hear from professionals that we work with, but it would be really good to get an introduction uh, from you uh, over the course of today's conversation. And that topic is image recognition and computer vision satellite technology. Ivan, why is this topic so important to you? Or why is it relevant to you? What, what are your interests in this topic? Yeah. Uh, so I had my first experience working with a satellite imagery back in 2017, when I participated in the data fusion uh, contest from IEEE and had the chance to actually got a word uh, and the publication out of it. So um, this is, I think, it's a moment where I start really interesting into satellite imagery analysis. So yeah, it's uh, six years. And but then uh, when I started my company, of course, this was one of the strongest, um, strongest, let's say, offering from our side. Uh, and we offered this for multiple companies. But eventually, we realized it's, it's actually quite interesting for companies and we realize there is an opportunity to uh, make product out of it. So this is the short story. About, awesome. Uh, yeah, great. And thanks for keeping it short as well. Um, I'm sure your customers will appreciate that personal passion area from you as well as that kind of early experience uh, and the foundations. And as for your, you said your product offering, for your customers, tell me what is the problem you're addressing by uh, creating this image recognition um, satellite technology? Yeah, so um, the business problem is quite diverse. So there is no, um, I mean, um, one or unique use cases. There is a really broad range of use cases starting from detecting the uh, construction debris, uh, risk management, evaluating the wildfires, early detection of wildfires, for example. Um, uh, Business-wise, it's about insurance. It's about also uh, evaluating amount of uh, crops, which is growing. So this is basically for hedge funds important to understand and predict how many crops uh, and what type of crops would be uh, providing the uh, resources right so basically evaluating the supply in a in a short term um uh, so it's really diverse in terms of the in terms of the industries right and uh, in terms of the importance it became quite you know it became quite feasible to do the analysis because satellites are basically covering with imaging the whole globe starting from 1970 right but the bottleneck was uh, analysis. So basically people couldn't analyze such amount of data. And uh, with AI and the development of computer vision technology, so this became uh, quite feasible nowadays. Yeah? Mm. Totally, you, um, you signpost or you, you mention a few different industry areas there, wildfire detect wildfire detection, insurance, crop evaluation, very, very broad. I also thought about property development and navigation systems all using or could use uh, this type of image recognition. I, I recognize that it's long been the privilege of huge companies to use drones and AI. So how, how's your product and your product offering different? Yeah, very good point. So 
Indeed, so it's basically analysis of these large data sets, terabytes of satellite data was before a privilege of uh, corporate sector, right? So the companies which could really invest uh, uh, months and uh, hundreds of thousands of euros, right? Um, now, nowadays, uh, I mean, you can you can build a pipeline quite quickly um, if as a data scientist because of the availability of data sets, uh, also annotated data sets, and um, uh, with um, uh, what is missing is the only part when you need to really place an object on the map, right? So basically, whatever you detect on satellite imagery, you have to map it on the on the globe and provide the coordinates to it, right? Uh, and and proper pipe pipelines which are built by data engineers and uh, engineers right and then in terms of offering uh, so this is the product which we are building by AI, allowing to really reduce it to hundreds so and people uh, who doesn't have any mm. really um expertise or uh, understanding of machine learning, uh, they still can do it via a low-code, no-code platform for IPXAI. Interesting. So non-technical professionals or non-technical people can gain access and uh, use this via your no-code platform. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll just make it clear. It sounds like we're advertising for, for fly picks and we're really not on the, I'm really looking forward to getting into this, but um, I, I know you've not come on here to, to plug your product, but it's an interesting uh, area T tell me about a few relatable case examples. Like you mentioned the wildfire detection and insurance you kind of put this in context for us. Yeah, sure. So, for example, for insurance case, so uh, th there are uh, really few companies which are doing only analysis of satellite imagery to, for example, detect number of trees near a house, right? So, and uh, mm. based on the number of trees, of course, trees possesses uh, danger in case of storm, in case of wildfire, the trees are basically uh, the danger for a property. And then uh, based on the estimation of the distance to a tree, right, which is quite easily once you detect the coordinates of a tree and building, it's quite straightforward to evaluate the distance between them. Uh, you are able to evaluate the danger and the risk, right? Uh, um, of course, you need to also have a historical data to estimate it, but basically you can use this information to estimate the danger uh, of a wildfire or a storm uh, damage uh, on a roof, for example, for a property. Yeah, This one case for insurance company, for example. Hmm, interesting. You, you have told me offline about a smart city use case. Could you tell me more about this? Many, well, not many, there are several clients that we work with across the city in Berlin who are heavily involved in uh, smart cities, whether that be from a navigation and a, or an environmental perspective. Tell me about your involvement in smart cities. So we uh, we are supporting one uh, Middle East city, Medina city, um, with their smart city activities. And basically, uh, they're using drones. They are not using satellite imagery, but drones in order to do uh, detection of um, issues city might have, right? So and using aerial images, we detecting the trash, we detecting the uh, plants, uh, which might be, you know, lack of watering, for example. We're detecting the uh, patches on the road or cracks. So this kind mm. of information is uh, uh, available uh, based on the analysis like and, potholes yeah potholes yes exactly so tiny tiny um areas your ai uh, platform could pick up interesting it's not i mean it depends of course on the elevation uh, of the drone right uh, and in terms of elevation so the 50 meters is good enough in order to detect you know uh, um objects uh like like a like a ball like this kind of object is a level yeah mm, okay well 
Uh, how has then your your platform helped to advance the existing capability? Uh, so we train a library of models which are able to detect the um, different type of trash, uh, plastic, hazardous trash, uh, tires, um, and the different uh, type of uh, issues that city might have. One thing about Berlin is that Berlin is basically no flying zone for, for drones, right? And uh, in this mm. case, uh, the application of uh, FlyPix is limited here. And in general, the aerial image analysis is, is limited here. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, satellite imagery, so you still we still are working and are able to detect some kind of objects like pile of trash, right? So these are visible from satellite imagery for environmental, for example, and sustainability use cases. Uh, but uh, smaller objects are quite difficult to detect. Hmm. Okay, interesting. T tell me about some of the other possibilities that your, your tech has developed. Mm -hmm. um, another interesting use case um, can be uh, forestry management. Uh, so you basically uh, For with... forestry management forestry management yeah right okay so to detect and count individual trees right uh, especially for companies which are fighting the reforestation which are basically supporting reforestation activity to understand whether the uh, you know growth rate mortality rate um, and uh, to understand whether the forest is moving, is growing, right? So there are no problems with it. Um, this is a different use case. Now with the satellite imagery, you can also detect uh, some issue forest might have like beetles, right? So, or diseases, right? Using satellite imagery. So like part of the trees might be affected by it. And you can see from satellite images that the, area uh, is yeah affected by some kind of disease. You don't know what type of disease, but based on the tree, basically you can see, and color of the tree, you can see there is an issue. And then you can send, um, you know, some uh, responsible people to, to, to analyze and to see it on site. That, that's, that's wonderful to hear, um, being able to, analyze or identify and analyze the growth and mortality rates of trees and also general health diseases associated with trees it seems like with that kind of granular assistance the possibilities are endless as cliche as that is to say what well, what do you think the future of this type of technology could be and, uh, and let's even look at the near future let's look at the next five years what could be the possibilities? Yeah, uh, I think the, 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 obviously there will be more and more use cases. Uh, uh, I think maybe the you know um, people who are uh, looking into the um, basically people like for in forestry management or um, city authorities they do not completely. Uh, know the value and possibilities which satellite imagery can provide. But once people started to understand its power, then more and more use cases would appear. And uh, um, uh, from one hand, right? So from business hand, there will be more and more understanding coming to um, potential use cases. Uh, and they would be obvious due to the return on investment. Uh, from other hand, we will get more and more higher, uh, um, higher quality satellite imagery. So we now have uh, 0 0.3 meter per pixel, the resolution. Yeah, so you basically can mm -hmm. see car quite clearly from from this satellite imagery. Uh, in in two years, there will be a satellite uh, from US. Um, they are going to launch a satellite Arbedo. And it will be uh, 0 0.1 meter, right? Basically 10 centimeter. And this would allow mm. people to detect, yeah, objects with the size of the ball from satellite, which is amazingly. And this is this is naturally natural resolution, which is coming from sensor. 
Uh, yeah. But if you apply AI on top of it, you can increase the resolution artificially using the generated AI to five centimeter, for example. And this five is five centimeters. Level. That's incredible. A pixel, and this is a level of drones which is flying on elevation of fifty to seventy meters, depending on the sensor, of course, by lot. Mm. So uh, the future is bright. Uh, let's see how how <laughs> how we reach. Yeah. So the, the future is bright because technology is advancing to increase accuracy. And it, it, it seems like a case machine learning, the more use cases you have, the more accurate your technology can be. What kind of other use cases might we see to help move forward uh, this technology? Um, another use case is uh, coming slightly from different side. Uh, basically satellites on, not only covering the uh, RGP images, right? So they also able to do it in multispectral data, like infrared, right? To see the methane leakage, for example, right? Uh, it allows us to uh, also using the uh, active radar, synthetic aperture radar, it's a different type of sensors. And it's actually- Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? Yeah, synthetic aperture radar. So it's an active satellite which is sending a signal and receiving it. But uh, why I'm mentioning it, uh, it's because it's able to see through the sky, through the clouds. It's able to see through the, during the night, right? So, I mean, obviously it's not the uh, same as RGP images, basic images, but still it's uh, good enough. For example, uh, one use case I'd like to mention is detecting the cost ships which are fish um, going to um, fishing to some waters when they don't have quotes right so basically some uh, uh, vessels are going to yeah. fish in the territory where they are not allowed to do fishery right do it to the national park or do it with the national regulations but with synthetic aperture radar, uh, they can be tracked, detected, and then uh, uh, find. Yeah. So mm. that that uh, so um, that reminds me of uh, Greenpeace's ship that uh, you, you know sa sails the seas and hunts down these uh, whaling vessels, and yes. that would be the need for them would be. Um, uh, no longer because of synthetic aperture radars. Yes. And exactly. they're able to see through clouds and night sky. And I assume with more use cases, even that technology is going to get more accurate and more uh, user-friendly, let's say. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, for the Berlin data community, I I'm thinking if if you're an ML engineer, or an AI engineer right now, and you're interested in this area, what should you be doing? What should you be investing your time in and studying to, to help you learn more about this area? Uh, if you are already a ML engineer or data scientist, there, is, there are really a lot of competitions um, which uh, has been ended, but also uh, ongoing. And um, in this competition, you can get the resources and data and see uh, also solutions, especially if you go to Kaggle or these kind of platforms, you can check the solutions of existing for building detection, detection, car detection. There is really a lot of different objects and, uh, and types of, let's say, land zones which can be detected using satellite and available data sets. So you can start from there. Um, apart from it, you can also uh, analyze to, 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 to review some papers about the uh, uh, different yes, types of satellites, like I mentioned, and sensors, right? So there is RGB standard one. Uh, uh, there are multispectral data, uh, which is able to see in the infrared, for example. Uh, band um, and uh, there is also synthetic aperture there. So all of these sensors and understanding on high level uh, and there is a really huge demand of people who 
uh, who um, uh, underst have an understanding or experience in synthetic aperture radar analysis. So this is a really hot topic. Uh, there is a lot of data, there is a lot of use cases uh, due to the sensor type, but there is a lack of um, expertise and people who are able to, to uh, implement the use cases. Mm. So that could bring in the um, skills needed or you know a skills shortage in, in an area of synth synthetic apertures. Yeah. Hmm, fantastic. That's all we've got time for, Ivan. Do you have any final thoughts for us? Um, so, yeah, basically I would encourage everyone to think about uh, potential AI use cases in satellite uh, imagery analysis and also uh, would encourage professionals, my colleagues, uh, as well as business to uh, review the opportunities and uh, to see the opportunities which uh, uh, satellite image analysis and drone image an an analysis enables for us. Fantastic. I, and, and I do the same, recommend businesses to look beyond what they think is possible because it's entirely possible that your business or another AI invested business has some kind of upcoming solution for it. And thanks for your advice to the ML community as well. Uh, competitions, Kaggle platform, and paper reviews. You've also got your early award and publication. Perhaps they can review that as well. Yeah, so, uh, but there is much more advanced than, than this one. So it's like six years ago. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, Ivan, thanks very much for your time. And uh, I ask if anyone is not satisfied with the advice that they can reach out to you or to us directly. And yeah, we look forward to seeing much more of your work in this field. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate your time.